to all the family members of the world, to the pastors. Hello, I am Shincheonji Church of Jesus, Man Hee Lee. Recently, to the whole world, Shincheonji, 12 tribes, the 12 tribe leaders, I know that they proclaimed the word of revelation. Everyone, were you able to listen to it well? As you listen to the revealed word, maybe you have doubts or maybe there are things that you would like to ask questions about. At, at any time, uh, you could ask the questions. I am, as the 12 tribe leaders, did they uh, give a testimony that was satisfying to all the pastors? Uh, I was praying in the back as they proclaimed the message. As I listened to them, I think that the 12 tribe leaders did well. However, from your judgment, I don't know how it is how it was for you. However, I this book of revelation, this new covenant, this revealed word. As someone who has seen the actual entities of this prophecy, if I don't testify about what I saw, it, that's not something that I can, can do. So I worried a lot. However, just like it says in Revelation 22.16, what you have seen and heard, go to the churches and testify. There is that passage there. However, the church is not just inside Korea, but it's in every nation all over the world. How can I go to all those nations and testify? Therefore, I, through the 12 tribe leaders, the revealed word, word, one chapter by one chapter, each person was in charge, and in the form of a seminar, we were able to proclaim this word to everybody. I don't know if you were able to listen to it well and understand it. In the past, Matthew 10, Jesus said, he sent the disciples to evangelize. He says, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. And it says Jesus prayed for them. Right now, I have sent them to your pastor, so it's different from the past. I didn't worry so much. And also, I thought that you would listen very well and that you would study well. And as you, uh, since you've already attended theology school, I believe that you would um, be able to listen to it well. Regarding this book of Revelation, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and the end just like this word, from chapter 1 to chapter 22, as Jesus opened the book and fulfilled all of that, I saw all of that. So I'm going to testify about what I saw as if it is like an old story. I grew up in the countryside uh, and only know the th work of farming. It's not like I went to a church. I didn't go to a theology school. It's not like I was evangelized by somebody. One day, from heaven, a star bigger than me, while I'm praying, came to me. And the place that I was praying was this wide field. But that light was so bright, and it was difficult even to just look at that light. I was so astonished, so I ran home, and I woke up my father. Father, father, a star came. A fa star came. Because of this astonished voice, and I said that a star came, the father woke up, and then he came out, and he was also startled. Wow, that star is really bright. It's really big. 
That's what he said. For three days, this star came and I was able to see it. From that point on, I went up to a mountain and before God, I made a promise. And that's how I started out my life of faith. So regarding life of faith or regarding the word, what was there that I knew? The only thing I saw and what I heard to testify about it, that was my life of faith. So, in Revelation, you have already heard it, but the beginning is Jesus, as a spirit, he comes, and seven stars, the seven messengers, he appointed them, and that's the beginning of Revelation. So, those people, I know their faces, I knew their names, I know all of it. That kind of st start, after that kind of beginning, at that location, you have the Nicolaitans. One entity, a pastor, comes into that place. That person to the seven messengers, in various ways, he deceives them, and with his authority, he taught uh, his doctrines, many people, and made them commit adultery. However, the seven messengers didn't know who that was. After this kind of event, Jesus chose me and made known, showed me all these things. And because he told me, I was writing, I wrote letters. However, those letters, I wrote it and I sent it, but it was something that Jesus had commanded. But these people, there was not one person who repented. That's right. If they had repented, many things would have been different. And in that letter, the content of the letter, it was a promise. If you overcome, with who? With Satan's pastor, the Nicolaitans, if you fight and overcome them, these are the things that will be given to you. That was the promise. However, there was not one person who believed. That was probably the case. They didn't know anything. So how, I, so how, who would listen to somebody like me who didn't know anything? However, it, that le the content of the letter wasn't based on my own thoughts. That's right. This was the beginning, the fulfillment the beginning of the fulfillment of this new covenant revelation. However, in this world, who knew the seven messengers that Jesus had appointed? They became one with the Nicolaitans, and they committed all kinds of sins. So that's why uh, letters asking for repentance were sent. However, that beginning, the seven spirits before the throne of God was united with them, and they were working through them. That's why even in the content of the letter, if you don't repent, I'm going to remove what is placed above your head. That's right. The seven stars and the seven uh, spirits, the one who has the seven stars and the seven, uh, seven stars and the seven spirits says, Jesus came with the spirits of heaven and he appointed the seven messengers here on earth, and with that spirit he was one and made them proclaim the gospel of God. But these people, they didn't know their own appointed task, and they didn't know who they were according to the Bible. And in the midst of that, you have Nicholas, this kind of person entered, but that this, they didn't know whether this person was Satan's pa pastor or not. Even that they didn't know. Of course, that was the case. That was the uh, situation. The one of the seven was actually a woman. But these people, all of them, it's not like they uh, had a long life of faith. They were just common people as they were carrying out a life of faith. However, 
When everything started, it, everything went well. Within a, a short period of three years, nationwide, just branch, branch churches, they had 80 branch churches, so that was really good actually, isn't it? But, and because of that, they became arrogant and complacent, and they started to follow the pleasures of the world, and Satan's pastor enters and moves them. So uh, they actually uh, thought it was fun. But what do you think Jesus' position was? So Jesus chose me. At that time, when I was praying in the fields, that star that I met, I thought it was just general, but when I think, general, general thing, but when I carried out a life of faith, uh, I started to understand, I understand now what that star was. In any case, the 12 tribe leaders, the, con the content that they testified about, 2,000 years ago, the pro prophecy that was made became flesh and appeared today. And according to that word, the actual entities that appeared along with the prophecy was testified. The past, uh, pastors, what are you waiting within this Bible? And what do you know? And what do you desire to do? People, even if you do things according to your own thoughts, that's only your thoughts, and it's not something what God wills. God, He already prophesied and promised in advance what He will fulfill, and when it is fulfilled, He expects people to believe when it is fulfilled. John 14, verse 29, it says, I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. That's what he said. So, there is prophecy and there is fulfilled reality. If prophecy remains as prophecy, who would believe in it? That prophecy, according to that content of that prophecy, there's a time when it is fulfilled. That's right. Then, if this book of Revelation has been fulfilled, since the prophecy was made, it has been approximately 2,000 years. For 2,000 years, did it take that long? God, this gospel of the kingdom of heaven, when it is made known to, when it's testified to everybody, when it's testified to everybody, that's when the end will come. That's what he said, right? That's right. This book of Revelation, there are different points from our thoughts as believers. In Revelation, what kind of events take place? There is the work of betrayal where the chosen people of God betray God. There, there's this kind of event and there's also destruction where you have those who oppose. They carry out the work of destruction. And after that, there is the work of salvation. There is also two rounds of battles, of wars. This pastors of Satan regarding the church uh, established by heaven, it destroys that church. And secondly, God's group also uh, destroys Satan's organization. So, from the time that Revelation starts until the time Revelation ends, it's war. It's a war between God and the devil. It's not just, just because something a person appears, you can't see the devil. However, it is actually a war between the devil and God. So, if you win, these are the things these are the things that will be given to you that's what it says and to overcome means that there is a there's a implies that there's a war and there's also an opponent that you have to fight against so today god fulfills this book of revelation however there is a condition to fulfill this uh, book of revelation what is it this is at the time of the first coming, what Jesus prophesied to appear in reality, these 
fulfilled realities, this becomes the testimony to be able to overcome. And another thing is, in the past, when Jesus came here on earth, he prophesied about the things of the future and he also sowed God's seed. So, it's God's seed. In the past, in the Old Testament, there was no such thing. However, today it is different from, the, from that past. Isn't that right? God appointed, appointed Adam and Eve, but these people, they didn't keep God's word, and they ate the fruit of the knowledge of a good and evil. And the fact that they ate that fruit of good and evil, that wild beast, the serpent, this serpent is actually Satan, the devil, and the dragon. That's what it says, right? This wild serpent, because of its deception, uh, they ate that fruit of good and evil. And as a result of eating it, this Adam and Eve, they didn't keep God's promise. They violated that covenant. And even at this time of Mo at the time of Moses, like Adam, they broke the covenant. That's what it says in Hosea 6 verse 7. That's how it's recorded. This work of God, from the time of Adam it started, and until the time of Revelation, it flowed, and all the things that took place during that time, all of them, they did not keep the covenant that they made with God. That was the result. That was the, uh, that was the cause. But they're supposed to keep it, right? Then what is it that we're supposed to keep today? On the night of the Passover, if we say Passover, pastors, uh, you know what kind of day it is, right? It was something that happened during the time of Moses. On that night, Jesus, he gathered the disciples and established the new covenant. The new covenant. Why, is it refer why did he establish a new covenant? Because God, for the creation of a new thing, the sowing of the two kinds of seed and the new covenant, it was prophesied, right? That prophecy was fulfilled when Jesus came on the night of the Passover. He gathered the disciples and he established a new covenant. How? By his blood. When we say Passover, it's the evening that they were able to be saved, right? That night, that's how he established the covenant. Then, this new covenant, what is it? What kind of covenant is it? It is actually the content from Revelation 1 to 22. It was this content. Then, a covenant is something that must be kept, right? Adam, from the time of, at the time of Moses as well, at the time of Noah as well, all of them didn't keep the covenant. However, Jesus, in his own blood, the, pro the new covenant that he promised, today, we, at the time of the second coming of Jesus, when revelation is fulfilled, Jesus made that covenant so we would keep it. Even if it's us, if we don't keep the covenant, do you think that we'd be able to attain salvation? Isn't that right? The point is, it's this covenant. So, this new covenant, this revelation, is something that must be fulfilled, right? This is something that Jesus prophesied. Then, we have to keep it in this content, Revelation 22, 18, and 19, if you look at that passage, this revelation, if you add to it or take away from it, you can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. Then, therefore, this new covenant revelation, everyone must realize it and understand it and keep it. However, if we don't know the meaning of revelation and even if the actual entities of Revelation have uh, didn't appear, how can you believe it and keep it? Isn't that right? The point is, is, is God's prophecy, this book of Revelation, and God fulfilled it. When God fulfilled it, the one who sees it, believes it, and keeps it is the one that attains salvation. You can't add or subtract from it. From it. Pastors, 
Up until now, how did you, I don't know how you understood it, but I have seen all these actual entities and heard about it. Even if it's a child or a fool, the one who saw it and the one who heard it, they can say that, right? That they saw it and they heard it. That's right. No matter what kind of knowledge, and just because you have something, if you try to uh, show something from your own or add from it, that's not what we should do, right? Even if I'm ignorant, and uh, it doesn't mean that I shouldn't testify, right? Whatever you've seen, if you testify about it, then you've done your appointed task, right? Therefore, I also made a lot of efforts. I'm sure you have heard, but the 12 tribe leaders as well, they also put in a lot of work and this word. They put their life down and have been doing the work. That's right. Therefore, to this whole world, the seminar, the videos, through this, we uh, proclaimed it this time. And I'm sure you have heard about it very well. And these 12 tribe leaders, what they said, I'm sure that you even recorded it. However, if they made a mistake or testified incorrectly, then make it known. Please let us know. And we will testify, uh, explain regarding that. And also, to all the pastors of the world, God is one. Isn't that right? And Jesus is also one. And this Bible is also one. Whether it be the one that you have or the one that I have, this book, the content is the same. It's the same Bible. And we say we believe in God. And as people who believe, uh, pray in front of God, we have the same Bible, we have the same hope. Should we be divided and fight with one another? That's not the way it should be, right? Jesus, just like he was one with God, we also should love one another. And God, Jesus said to, for us to be one, right? Then, within Jesus, within God, we should be one. That's how I think. Every one regarding this new covenant revelation, if you have something you know, and if you tell us, and if that word is correct, then I would believe it. If it's correct, why wouldn't I believe it? Revelation is the word, so why wouldn't you believe in it? I believe it. Therefore, us within God now, let's not be two, but let's be one. This, in the past, I went around the world 31 times, and we had the uh, peace summit, and we received signatures. As we had the peace summit, they, they, they said that they would participate in it, in that peace summit, and we hosted that peace summit in Korea. At that time, politicians, also all the organization leaders, and people of religion, a lot of people came. So the politicians, they uh, promised to uh, enact an international law, and the people of religion said that they would become one under God. Before God and before all the citizens of the world, they signed and they pledged and they uh, made a promise. Isn't that the right thing to do? Why would, within the, within the same God and within the Bible, why should we be divided and be opposed one another? This is something that is so wrong. We don't need to do that. We are within God, within the same Bible. We have to be one. If we don't know or don't, we should uh, learn and we should be one with, with each other. Isn't that right? Jesus, in John 14, when he went to heaven, what did he say? Jesus said, I, me leaving, 
is to prepare a place for you. And when this place is prepared, he said he will come again and will lead a lot of people to himself, will draw many people to himself. Before he went, it's something that he said. However, when you look at the explanation of him returning in Matthew 25, at that time, Jesus said, according to the promise, he will create the kingdom of heaven, he will prepare a place, and he said he'll come, right? And when he comes, he'll gather the people and like the sheep-like believers and the people who are like go, he said he will divide them. And then, to the sheep-like believers, he will say, that kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world, you will inherit it. I'm sure you have seen this kind of passage and you know very well. Jesus' return, according to the promise, uh, he will prepare that place and come, right? But if you don't do the correct life of faith and if you don't carry a life of faith like a sheep but like a goat, a false life of faith like a goat, then we won't be able to inherit that kingdom that has been prepared. And to the true believer, they will be able to inherit it. Just like this, Jesus is somebody who keeps the promise and fulfills it. Then, just because we say, Lord, Lord, and enter, uh, go to church is not everything, when Jesus has prepared that place and come to, has come back to us, then we need to go to Jesus, right? However, Jesus, what kind of form and what kind of appearance will he come? When he was alive, we don't know what his face looked like because we didn't see it, see it back then. However, when Jesus returns, what kind of appearance does he have? If you look at Revelation chapter 1, if you, we, were able to see, we were able to see Jesus' appearance. His appearance is truly very difficult to see even with your eyes, and it's a tremendous appearance. Isn't that right? That's how it's recorded. The face is like the sun, like shining like the sun, it's brighter than the sun. And his feet are like fiery pillars, like this. So it's definitely not like the physical body that he had, if it's a spiritual body. Then, Jesus of the second coming, he doesn't come in the form of a flesh, but comes in the form of a spirit, right? And with the seven spirits, with the seven stars, he comes and does the work, work at the beginning, right? That's what it says in Revelation 1. Even if Jesus comes like this, we can't see him, we can't recognize him. However, it is through the promise of the Bible that we are able to recognize it. Isn't that right? Then, in chapter 2 and 3, through this John that he chose to the seven messengers, the seven churches, to the seven, to the seven churches, the seven messengers, a letter, letters are sent, but they don't listen to it. They don't try to know it either. And Satan's teachings, Satan's food. They ate this and they committed adultery with Satan. That's how it happened. That's how it happened. Was it just? Was that all? In Revelation 18, as you can be, as it can be seen, all nations have drank the wine of adultery that Satan gives. They ate the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, and they all have fallen. What did they do as, the, as all of those who have fallen? They had married even the spirit of the devil. And God and Jesus judges the kingdom of Satan that have married, the sa married Satan, it's only after that that we have the wedding banquet of the Lamb. I'm sure you have seen this content thousand, ten thousand times, so you would already know. Even the fulfillment has to occur ac according to the logic and order, right? So even if they receive the letters, they pretend that they don't care or understand it. So what happens? As Jesus opens the book, 
these seven messengers that sinned, regarding the seven churches, he judges them. Where? In Revelation chapter 6, right? That's why ju judgment is carried out and they're driven out from there. The sun, moon, and stars were dwelling in heaven, but it falls to the earth. They were driven out from heaven. These seven messengers as well are kicked out, driven out. This group is driven out, and in chapter 8 and 9, they're all killed. They are all killed. Then, God and also Jesus comes, come to this earth, and all the things that happened, everything that God has been carrying out, God has been uh, working on, He brings it to an end. He, you, no one could say, I'm not it, I'm not it. That kind of word is not necessary. If God and Jesus say no, then it's no. If it has come to an end, it has come to an end. If God threw it away, then that thing has been abandoned, has been thrown away. Jesus said in Matthew 8, 11 and 12, the subjects of the kingdom are thrown outside into the darkness. And from the east and west, the ones that come, they are seated in the, at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. So up until now, people might have carried out a life of faith uh, who, without knowing the will. And they might have not carried out their life of faith uh, according to God's will on purpose. But after we understand God's word, if I have done something wrong before God, I should repent. And in order to be born again, we have to make an effort. Isn't that right, pastors? Sh shouldn't that, isn't that what we should do? Up until now, I didn't know, so I didn't every, do it, couldn't do everything. But today, with Jesus' return, and at a time when this Revel book of Revelation is being fulfilled, at this time, if we don't wake up, what kind of result will come? It's not just one day or two days, but eternally, it's an eternal punishment. Therefore, if we have done something wrong, we should repent and be born again. And based on God's will, within God, all of us should become one. That's what I think. Regarding the sins of those who killed him, Jesus said, please forgive them while he was on the cross. Stephen too, in Acts chapter 7, when he was being stoned to death, before he breathed his last, he said, Lord, do not hold the sin against them. And he prayed before God. Didn't he do that? Not just that, at that time, many people, the woman that committed adultery, she's dragged over and brought before Jesus. And what he said was, they, they took a stone in their hands, and according to the laws of Moses, this kind of woman should be stoned to death. But what do you say? And at that time, what was Jesus' response? If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. And they felt struck on their, in their conscience. They put their stone down and they left. Jesus came to save the sinners. He didn't come to save the righteous. That's what it says. Today, us too. Shouldn't we follow the example of Jesus? That's right. There are many opposers. There are many persecutors. There are many people who go against. But all these things, we have to understand it, right? Through this word, we have to understand, and through this word, we have to overcome it. In the Lord's Prayer that He taught us, what does He say? Just please forgive us of our sins, just as we have forgiven our debtors. That's what we always pray. And if that's the case, According to the Lord's Prayer, shouldn't we act on it? Isn't it applicable to the one that has forgiven others? So, we should also, like Jesus, 
forgive sin of others. And if a person has understood and has realized, we should be born again and do the work according to God's will, right? Pastors, is there anybody who has become my enemy? I don't think there's anybody who has become an enemy with me. That's right. However, we, be, we, believed, we believe in Jesus to go to heaven, and we also uh, have examined the scriptures, the Bible. So we should go into this Bible, and we should go within God and Jesus, and let us all become one. From the time I registered into a church, what kind of thought did I have? I didn't uh, look after my family, and I thought, this church is my house, and these church members are my family members. And diligently, diligently, I volunteered my work efforts. That's how I worked. If I carry out my life of faith, then I have to carry out a life of faith that heaven acknowledges. Isn't that right, everyone? That's how I think. The 12 tribe leaders, they testified from chapter 1 to chapter 22. However, there's some, one thing that they haven't been able to do. The prophecy up until Revelation 22, they were not able to uh, show directly the fulfilled reality of Revelation 1 to 22. If you want to see, you have to come to the Republic of Korea. But you can't do that, right? So that's why when they were giving the lecture, I'm sure the tribe leader said this kind of word. However, they would, the tribe leaders also probably would feel unfortunate. They're supposed to like hold on to something and say, this is this, but they couldn't do that, right? But these tribe leaders, when I think about it, courageously, they testified about a lot of the fulfilled reality. Therefore, now you record one by one the, this word of this revealed word, and I hope you understand it. And then everybody who's following you and desires to go to heaven, to your congregation members, you, the pastors need to teach them. And if there's something that you don't know, you can call and you can ask the question. And once you understand, you can, you can teach your congregation members. The congregation members believe and have followed you up until now. You have to make it so that they all enter the kingdom of heaven, right? That's right. That's why that, that's, you shouldn't be careless. And Jesus comes as a form of a spirit, and as, he, as he's fulfilling revelation, we shouldn't be lazy or complacent, right? We should, if you don't know, we should say we don't know, and if we say we know, we should say we know it. Isn't that right? And if I don't know, I should try to make an effort to know, right? I think that there is nobody that is more ignorant than me in this world. That's right. In terms of the world, there's not much that I learned. I was in the countryside, and I just learned about farming. So what would I know? It's not like I learned something from uh, at a seminary. I'm not a pastor or an evangelist. However, what I saw and heard, I am proclaiming exactly according to what I saw and heard. So if, we, if it's chapter 1, it's chapter 1. If it's chapter 2, it's chapter 2. Chapter 3, chapter 3. All these things that I saw. Everyone, if you look at Revelation, chapter by chapter, when Jesus is fulfilling that prophecy, there's somebody who watched all of it, right? That's right. Because I saw it, because I heard it, that's why I'm testifying about it. So, according to the words of Jesus, I have told you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you would believe. It's that word. If you believe in that word, pastors, let us all become one. It's not like I want to be the leader of some organization. I just simply believe in God, and I believe in this word of God, 
And I believe in the fulfilled reality of this word. And let us become, go into God and we live together with God because we're family members of God. If there is a family, when we're young, we don't know the situation of the family, but when we become a little older, we understand the situation of the family. Once we become mature, we understand all of it, right? Just like that. Us two today, 2,000 years have passed, and 6,000 years have passed. Today, we have become a lot more mature. Therefore, truly, according to the will of God and Jesus, we have to go into this word, and we have to become one. These are words are true. It is only when we do that that we will be acknowledged by heaven as well. There are many people, even if a lot of people in the world see that, they can say, wow, that's really good. That is, isn't that right? So right now, I think that it was a really good thing that we held that peace summit. The, these people of religion, they all signed and pledged that they would become one within God before God and before all the people of the world. And if they did that, then they should become one. Isn't that right? If somebody did something, if someone doesn't know, and, and uh, if I know something, then quietly I should explain it and uh, resolve things through conversation. We shouldn't fight, right? Why should we fight with each other when we want to understand God's word, right? We don't need to do that. So we have to become one, but as I traveled around the world 31 times, the nations, I heard a lot of things about um, them saying things about Korea, but the people of this nation, they still don't feel it. Even if they, in the, under the Japanese occupation, how do we live? That kind of people were freed. After they were liberated, what happened? They were divided north and south. Is that a good thing? The people who were oppressed, do they have to be like that? Isn't that right? And this tragic war and have occurred and a lot of young people died. Should this nation be this way? And so these people, that's why they say that Korea might be the cause for third world war. What other people think about uh, Korea is different regarding the people as well. Why should it be this way? That's not the way it should be. We should all love one another and become one. How much suffering we went through, how much sadness we had to go through. Now we should be different. That's what should happen. That's how, what we should do. Religion is something that is holy, but why should we fight because of religion? This is something that's wrong. And that's not what we should do. do. So now, to all the pastors, just as I make an earnest plea, I'm saying it to the pastors, all of us, according to the promise, within God, let us be one. Within the Bible, let us become one. This word I really want to say, isn't that what we should do? And... This word, even within the Gospels of the Bible, you know, you know, all the pastors should know. What we don't know, even if you're a Christian pastor, no one knew this book of Revelation. It is only when it is fulfilled that you can see it and understand it, but we weren't able to know it. However, Jesus, in order to testify to the whole world, after it is proclaimed to the testify to the whole world, uh, 2,000 years later, in order to fulfill Revelation, He came back. 
God recorded Revelation, and he sealed it with seven seals, and he had it in his hand. No one in heaven or no one on earth was able to understand it, right? However, now, time has come, and to Jesus, who overcame, this book is given, and Jesus received this book, and one by one, he opened the seals and fulfilled it. And... Whenever the seals were opened, there was somebody who saw it on the side. And when this book of Revelation is fulfilled like this, after this, to the one who saw the fulfillment in Revelation chapter 10, through the angel, the open book, the book that is open from all, with all the seals that have been opened, it's been given to him. To who? To John, right? John received it and ate it. In the past, 2,000 years ago, Jesus also, Jesus also received and ate that open scroll of Ezekiel chapter 3, and he proclaimed it to the physical Israel. In Matthew 15, verse 24, that word that Jesus spoke is recorded, right? Just like that, today, Jesus received, uh, it's not that Jesus received the book, but Jesus received the book and opened it and fulfilled it. And because he fulfilled it, the book is now opened, right? Because all the seven seals are opened. And through the angel, he gave it to John. And so John received it and ate it. Then now, who, where is that book? It would be inside the stomach of John, right? It's not like the angel has that book. Jesus wouldn't have that book, and God wouldn't have that book either. That book was passed on, passed on, and it entered into John's stomach. If you hear this word, you have to listen to the person who ate that book, right? What do you think? This is actually the food that leads to eternal life, right? It's the content of the new covenant that God desires to fulfill, right? What are we doing as we carry out a life of faith? In the Old Testament, you had to, you had to meet Jesus. Then you can say, uh, it, it says, knowing God and knowing the one that God sent is eternal life. John 17, verse, verse 3, just like that content. Today, too, you have to know the one that received this book, right? That's why you have to listen to that word. That's the food that leads to eternal life, right? That means that that book is actually the book of Revelation. Then, you have to eat this revelation. This is the food that leads to eternal life. It's not the food of the flesh, but it's the food of our spirit. It's this kind of word. It has to be according to logic, right? At that time, uh, the one who holds the power of death, the dragon is captured, right? So because it's captured, then throughout the thousand years, there's nobody who deceives, right? At that time, there will be no sin. This kind of world, God desires to fulfill, and this is the content of revelation, inside this revelation. So, now, all of us become one. We have the introductory level materials, teaching materials. We also have the teaching materials for the intermediate level, and we also have the teaching material for the advanced level. And the advanced level is this book of Revelation. Because you know a lot of things, that's why the 12 tribe leaders just lectured on Book of Revelation. But through the introductory level, we have to learn the explanation of the parables. And in the intermediate level, you have to look at what God does, the work that God carried out. And then after that, you have to know the content of Revelation. But you just went straight to Revelation and uh, the tribe leaders lectured on Revelation. Everyone, because you have recorded it, listen to it again and again, and compare it with this words of this book, and we are not, it's not by words, but by God's seed that we're born, and we are the family of God created with uh, God's revealed word. 
So let us definitely become one. Then God will be so joyful, happy about it. And this Bible will be happy. Think about it at least once. That's what we should do. To the 12, the 12 tribe leaders, as they testified about this book of Revelation, I was really you know, worried that they might make a mistake. But when I listened to them, there's not much that made, they made a mistake. Make. I think that they, they did better than I thought. But everyone, everyone, tr now truly, if you have understood this word, then within God, we have to become one. And within Jesus, we have to become one. And this dark world, we have to shine the light. And to the people who are dwelling in darkness, let help them come out to the light so that they can live together. This is the work that we need to do. If there's something that you want to know more about, if there's something that you need to ask questions about, if, if you need to, if you send letters or if you send an email, then if it's something that we can do, we will be able to, we will help you. We can do that. Please understand that. It's not something that, it's not like we made this name ourselves or it's not like we made this organization ourselves. It's not that. According to the blueprint of the Bible, we did it. The name and everything else as well. That's what we did. In this world, there, how many places have been created according to the uh, Bible? There isn't. But Shincheonji, even the name Shincheonji, is also biblical. According to the Bible, it has to be fulfilled. So it has to be created according to the Bible, right? So, the, even creating the 12 tribes, this too is according to the promise of the Bible. Every single thing, if there's something that's not of the Bible, if you point it out, we'll fix it right away. We are doing, we have been creating everything according to the Bible with all the um, fervor and diligence. What I'm telling you now, at the Kosong Training Institute, I am speaking from here. This training institute, it was, it's actually uh, for all the pastors from abroad so that they can come here and learn, and then they can go back to their own countries. And then, you know, we made at least like four big rooms. For who? For the pastors from, all of, from abroad and for all the visitors from abroad, we made it like this. So in the future, if we, you know, invite people, at least pe invite people, you can come and visit Korea. And this place is really famous. There's like a big river. And there's, there are mountains. And it's really good place. So, are you not going to see this? I think that God uh, has chosen this place for, to, for today's work. So this word to your congregation members, to the people who want to who follow you to go to the kingdom of heaven, please make it known to your congregation members. That's what you should do, right? And also, just as we breathe, uh, let us, you know, uh, communicate with each other through letters and we have to make sure that God uh, feels that we are one family. Can we do that? We can do that, right? There's nothing that we can't do. If it's a good thing, we should do it. That's right. Everyone, now, I worried about you so much. Revelation 22, 16, it says, we have to I have to testify to the churches. I've seen all of the world, but it's not like there's churches only in country, this country, but it's all over the world. I worried about this, but the 12 tribe leaders through videos and through seminars, they have proclaimed it to you, so now it's your responsibility, the pastor's responsibility. You heard it, so this word, you should shine it more brightly, and to the congregation members, you should make it known uh, so that you can feed them, feed it to them as it is the food, of, food that leads to eternal life. It's not the wine of adultery. 
It's not the wine from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's not that kind of food. This is the revealed word of heaven. It's something that's given from heaven. God had it up until now. And this book, Jesus took it and he opened it. And today, to all the world, we proclaimed it. This word of, uh, that leads to eternal life. You have to eat this and, and attain eternal life, right? If you die, what are you going to do? We cannot, uh, we have to actually live, right? We've got to live. Where is the value in believing in God? If you gain eternal life, then that's actually uh, glo returning glory to God, right? This word within us, it will create us so that we can live eternally. In the past, more than any uh, word of the Bible, this word of revelation, it works within us so that we would be able to live eternally. Therefore, now, please remember this word and let us all become one and let us become uh, one family that believe in God. Let us make that known to the whole world. I'm sure you understand. I won't say much more, but because you are pastors, I believe you understand. We have to become one, right? I'm going to say it first, so let's all uh, shout it out together. Within one, we are God. within God, we are one. You understand, right? We are one. Yes, thank you.